Clearly, the most superior Halloween candy are Smarties. Here's a closer look. Let's make a Smarty-inspired symbol for ArcGIS Pro. I mean, you don't have to think of them as Smarties, but let's, let's just add some dimensionality. I'll click this, and I'll look in the gallery, and I'm just gonna start from scratch with this symbol one, it's called. And we'll dig into this, go into the properties. I love the way that Smarties feel on my fingers when I hold them. Like, they're just, they're, they're wonderful. Um, but also, it's nice to give your points a little dimensionality sometimes. You want that data layer to have four instead of ground. So four and ground. I'll start out with a light, uh, smarty-like color. By the way, I learned these are called rockets in Canada from my friend Warren Davison, who lives like two hours to the east of me. I'm in Michigan. I mean, what a world we're living in. Okay, I'll look into the structure. So many cool features live inside structure. So I'll duplicate this, duplicate layer, and I'll come back here. Now I'm gonna make this locked so that later on, if I dynamically change the color or use data-driven colors, this little shadow graphic I'm adding won't be impacted. I don't want it to be impacted. I'll choose this and ooh, we've got a little linear gradient fill option. That's intriguing if I hit apply. Okay, we've got a linear gradient, but it's covering everything up. We just need some semi-transparency in here. So I'll choose black and I'll make it quite semi-transparent. I'll say like 80% transparent, so only 20% opaque, okay? And then I see a lot of people make this mistake. They keep white and they make this transparent white, and then you get these muddy gray values in between. Make it the same color, it's black, and then 100% transparent. Then you have a nice black to black transparency gradient. Let's see how this looks. It looks pretty cool, I'll zoom in here. We're getting somewhere. Um, this could have a little bit more depth and dimensionality, but we're not done yet. If I expand this, there's a tantalizing little option here called format polygon symbol. Polygon symbol, what the deuce? We're working with point symbols. Well, guess what? This really is just a polygon symbol in the shape of a circle. That's a really great feature, and I'm thankful that I can dig into this and change how this polygon in the shape of a circle is rendered. So I'll dig into this polygon symbol, and I'm gonna click on this structure. I mean, I've, I'm nested. We're like three levels deep now. This is great. I'm gonna add an effect called offset. Ooh, you can see something interesting just happened. I'll come back to my layers, and instead of a positive one offset, I'm gonna go, going the other way, thanks. Negative one offset, interesting. It's a little too much though. I'm gonna make it one pixel offset, so I'll go 0 0.75. By the way, oops, negative, negative. This is, these are points, and 0 0.75 points is the same as one pixel. Oh, I know. Okay, so that's 1.7, 0 0.75, hit apply. Intriguing getting something with a little bit of nuance and stuff. It's a little bit too clunky though. I mean like, burp, burp. let's play with this a little bit. So here, I'm gonna dig, what is? What am I gonna be like four levels deep now? I'm gonna look into this color scheme. I'm gonna dig into this, open up this color scheme editor and say, you know, I'm only interested in the shadow rendering in like the second half of that polygon. Okay, oh boy, kind of clunky, but you can see where we're getting. Let's try this. Some more, let's make this a little bit more nuanced. I'll decrease this, you know, I'm gonna make this 90% transparent since it's rather abrupt. And maybe I can add a little bit of light here because that's the way light works. I'm gonna add, I've got a little bit of darkness here to nothing and then nothing to light. So this is fully transparent black. I'll make this white fully transparent. So we've got kind of this neutral no man's land over here. And I'll make this just a little bit white. I don't know, 60% transparent white? Let's just see. Oh, interesting, cool. So I've got a subtle little shadow here, dips to nothing, and then it goes up to white. So semi-transparent black, fully transparent black, fully transparent white, semi-transparent white. No intermediate diluted gray values in between those. That's important. And can I change this? I mean, right now it's 90, it's straight down. I want it to be more like whoosh coming in from here, like my imaginary light sources in the northwest, top left, instead of straight down. So I'm gonna make this, let's see what happens, 100? Oh yeah, immediately it's more realistic and better. What a difference. And if, if a little is good, maybe more is better. 110. Yes, it is. I'm not gonna push my luck, apply. Okay, so we've got some little smarty, dimpled, uh, caved in little features, it's great. 
still pretty 2D looking though. I mean, it just looks like a little green gradient on my map. What can I, what do I do about this? Um, I'm gonna go into the structure. I'm gonna duplicate this. I'm gonna drag it underneath. We're gonna steal some of that work and make it a little fake drop shadow. Are you ready for this? So I'll go back to my layers. This is my drop shadow guy. I need to dig back in this one level of nesting. I'm gonna format my polygon symbol and I'm gonna open this up, open my color scheme properties, and I'm gonna get rid of the white because shadows don't, ha they aren't white, they're darkness. Okay, hit okay. And we aren't seeing anything because I have a negative offset. So it's rendering underneath all this stuff. I'm gonna give it a positive offset. Oh my goodness, there it is, beautiful. Okay, and now I need to just rotate, swing this around so that the shadow renders over here. And this is where my brain stops Oh, stops working. I just have to try things. E that looks <laughs> that's pretty good. Okay, I uh, swung it around-ish. Let's see how this looks. Yes, a little bit of grip. We're popping, We our features are now popping up off of the land a little bit. And that's great. Not a ton. It's not garish. It's not over the top. It's just a little bit of nuance. Uh, I mean, if that's good, maybe we can make it great. So let's go back into the structure. I'm gonna duplicate this again. Go back to the layers. Come here, expand this, format polygon symbol, and I wanna make this a little bit more sticking out, this double one. So, oh my goodness, math, uh, 1.5? Yeah, 1.5, and I've got this apply. I like it, all right. Um, well, I mean, if I like that, maybe I'll love another one. So I'm gonna duplicate this. By the way, I accidentally hit delete layer very frequently instead of duplicate layer, so watch out. Maybe I'll plant that in your brain and you'll start making the same mistake. Ah. <laughs> so let's go down to the bottom one. Just, this is the last one, I promise. I'll dig in here, 2.25, I don't know, it's math, I'm scared. Hit apply. Yeah, I like this. Anymore and it'll start to look kind of bad. We have a little smarty-like symbol popping up like a little puck sitting on the surface of our map, sitting proud of it. It's not a flattened thing baked into the map. It's a little proud feature boosting up off of the surface of our map. All of these have color locking locked, which is important. The only one unlocked is this one with our just simple colored disc. This means that if I come over here way back into this little artistic paintbrush symbol and I say, just anybody whose color is unlocked, you are now uh, raspberry flavored Smarties. Oh, you are now like orange flavored Smarties and it doesn't impact my shadow. Isn't that fun? Isn't that so fun? Okay, and you can also, when you're here in the overall symbol tab, you can just increase this point. Ka chow. Anyway, have fun. Try out some of these techniques for making your point features pop off the map just a little bit. Thanks for watching. Oh, and by the way, I did learn that these things are what Canadians call Smarties, which are just like M&Ms, man.